Hello and welcome back to the vault. I'm the Gav Major, and this is a review of the Pan Asia Premium Tier 5 Destroyer, the Anshan, which is available for 10,000 doubloons. Now, this is a Tier 4 and 5 game of Domination of Neighbors, and in team with Jaguar, Farragut, Fubuki, Fubuki, Pensacola, New York, New York, Bayern, War Spike, with Bayern and War Spike being in the division. So, on the left hand side, so we're going to have a push into the Alpha objective, going around the outside side. So, pushing on the inside uh, does mean you can get more spots into the center, however, um, does mean you get pinned against the island if you end up being engaged. So this is why I like to go to the left side of the island. Okay, it's less spotting, but there's more open water for me to break off any engagements if it so happens. So, Anshan is the lead ship of the Anshan class destroyers, which were purchased, um, well, basically belong to the Chinese Navy. They were purchased by the Chinese from the Russians, and they are basically a batch of four number Genevi class uh, destroyers, and these were purchased in the 1950s. So, Anshan, as always, in comparison to the fully upgraded Tech Tree Destroyers, as we position ourselves with our bow out of the cap in order to make sure that we have a nice quick getaway if we need it. So, survivability, she has the fourth highest HP of 14,400. For the armor, uh, it's pretty typical for a destroyer. She's got that typical tin can armor scheme, so um, not very, not going to be able to bounce many shells. Let's be completely honest. And furthermore, obviously, she doesn't have um, any torpedo reduction. Spotting a Fabuki, which is dropping its smoke already. We are just going to go full speed ahead to get out of here, but we are going to see if we can get some chip damage on the Fabuki. And now we have. Um, we'll talk about the torpedoes in a bit. But uh, at the moment, not firing at those torpedoes. Oh, good news, the Fabuki's wasted. Oh, there's two Fabuki's, okay. So we should be right to break off from the New York. There we go. And then we'll see what we can do about engaging the Fabuki over here. Now, even though our engines are incapacitated, it's not too bad because we do have Unstoppable. I'd always recommend Unstoppable as a trait. So yeah, onto the artillery. Um, we've got four number 5.1 inch guns mounted in four single gun mounts. We have a A turret with a B turret super firing at the front, and then we have a X turret super firing over Y turret at the rear. Doing a quick stop and start, the intention there is just to throw off any Kabuki torpedoes that might suddenly be coming our way. We should be right to win this gun engagement. Uh, the problem is, see that torch rest is going to hurt. Okay, we've got rid of her. And what I've done is I've used this island here to try and uh, blank off uh, the battleship from engaging me and also the other Fubuki. I'm now going to see if I can position myself in order to engage the other Fubuki. Obviously without being engaged by the battleship. See, so, yeah, it's all a bit go at the start of this game. So, uh, yeah, we have a just above average gun range of 10.7 kilometers. Also, we have a joint fastest reload of 3.5 seconds, but the joint slowest turret traverse speed of 30 seconds per 180 degrees rotation. Right, okay, there's the Fubuki. I know she doesn't have smoke. Again, just got to look at the minimap, just seeing where the enemy battleship is in order to make sure that we don't end up uh, being engaged by the battleship. Uh, where's the battleship? 6.6. .6. Okay, we're just going to have to get out of here very quickly. Right, yeah, so the total reverse speed is pretty poor, um, and that is something that I've tried to improve on with my command build. Now, when it comes to the uh, shower damages, uh, she has a just above average high explosive shower damage of uh, 1,900, but she has a below average fire chance of 7%, and a below average AP shower damage of 2,500. She also, well, when you combine that with her rate of fire, what kind of DPM are we looking at? Well, when it comes to the DPM, 
Um, I've got no support over here, have I? Um, she has the joint second highest high explosive DPM, joint highest AP DPM, and uh, a joint second highest fires per minute at 4.8. Uh, gonna have to keep moving, I think. The capturing this objective might be something that I have to do once the enemy battleships have vacated the area. So let's move on to the torpedoes. Um, as you've probably been seeing, I've been using deep water torpedoes. However, Anchan is uh, quite a special ship when it comes to torpedoes. You actually have the ability to choose between having normal torpedoes and deep water torpedoes uh, based on picking of a torpedo module. Um, so um, she comes basically normally with normal torpedoes as uh, but uh, regardless you have two triple launchers mounted on the center line and the torpedo angles are as you can see here they're, they're not too bad let's be honest now when it comes to the to normal torpedoes that you come with uh, these have the second fastest torpedo reload per, per launcher of 70 seconds which is a uh, quite nice um, they do have the joint fourth lowest damage though of 15,100 and the second largest detection of 1.4 kilometers. Also joint shortest range of only 6 kilometers but are the joint fastest at 75 knots. However there is a torpedo upgrade or torpedo module you can equip which is the Mark 9 torpedoes. Now these will grant you deep water torpedoes which I honestly prefer. Um, the reason being is that they have more range but we'll go into the details of what deep water torpedoes offer you. They offer you the fourth fastest reload of 79 seconds so they are a bit slower to reload. Third, third lowest damage of 15,000 so they do obviously do a little less damage as well. Now they do have the joint best detection of uh, 0 0.9 kilometers, so uh, they're not going to be spotted until point blank ranges, I guess you could say. And they have the joint second longest range of 8 kilometers. So although the difference is only 2 kilometers, that difference can be quite a big difference uh, when you consider that with the base torpedoes, you can't actually stealth torpedo. Um, well, your base torpedo range and your base detect ability means that your torpedo range is 0 0.5 kilometers less than your tor well, your torpedo range is 0 0.5 kilometers less than your base detect ability. Obviously, you can put camos and other mods and command inspirations on there in order to improve that. However, the uh, deep water torpedoes they automatically give you uh, a, I think a, a one kilometer. Um, or 1.5 kilometer um, excess of torpedo range over your base detect ability range, which is quite nice. Obviously, you improve that with commander inspirations and other things like that. And um, yeah, I, uh, the downsides of deep water torpedoes you cannot torpedo destroyers. But to be honest, everything else with these deep water torpedoes generally, I think, is just slightly m more universal, I guess you could say, which is a bit of an odd way to put it. Now, when it comes to maneuverability, she has the joint fastest speed of 38 knots, average turn circle of 610 meters. She's also got the second slowest rudder shift of 4.4 seconds. Concealment wise, she has the joint third best detectability of 6.5 kilometers, with a 3.3 kilometer detectability by air and 2.5 kilometer detectability when firing from smoke. She has two engine boosts, which have a plus 8% uh, boost on your base engine speed. And this will last for 120 seconds with a 180 second reload. And this will take your base speed up to 41.04 4, uh, knots. Um, we could shoot. Oh, yeah, I should only shoot if I get detected. So, okay, we'll shoot. There we go, she's gone. Nice. Then we can actually get the cap now. She also has two smoke screens. These have a 20 second duration, that's how long it takes to lay a smoke screen, an 81 second dispersion, that's how long the smoke screen is set around for, and a 240 second reload. Uh, this is comparable to the Russian smoke screens at this tier. Now, as always, down in the description will be the commander build and the modules. Uh, modules wise, I've taken Aim Systems Module 1 and Portion Module 2. In regards to commander, um, basically a typical destroyer commander build, I guess you could say. Um, the only thing I've done different is rather than using Sims, which would improve my HP, I've taken Madden, which improves my rate of fire and my turret traverse speed, just because that turret traverse speed is kind of painful. 
Oh well, there we go, 39,000 damage, um, which is quite a low amount of damage, but we did take out two enemy DDs, which will probably reward us quite well, and we also uh, did finish off that battleship with a flood in, with the only torpedo hit we did get, uh, also setting two fires as well, and getting first blood, so I can't complain too much there. Uh, Team-wise, there you go. Um, the reason why is because I engaged two DDs, um, I haven't got a lot of damage, but I did take away a lot of uh, percentage of those ships' HP, and therefore that's meant that I have got quite a nice uh, position on the end table. So remember, shooting DDs earns you more points because they have a lower HP pool. And economy-wise, walking away with 244. 2,000 credits with a premium account and no credit boosters there. Obviously, as a tier 5 destroyer, she does have an improved earning potential. Ship service cost in this case was only 27,669 credits. Well, overall, I don't mind her too badly. Um, she's kind of universal. She's a typical DD, as best way to put it. Really, there's, there's nothing super shiny or super special here. Change between normal torpedoes and deep water torpedoes um, before a game, where you obviously pick the module and the ship. Um, but really, you're just going to be picking the deep water torpedoes, I kind of feel. Uh, otherwise, she's basically a Genevi, is the best way to put it, with deep water torpedoes. Oh, well, if you did enjoy this, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to to subscribe. Down the description as always is the modules and the command build and also link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon as it is a non monetized channel. And if you are a Patreon, your lovely names will appear on the end screen. Until next time, I'm the Gaff Major and back to the port. Hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the Galaxy Major. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life.